As we travel towards the southwestern direction of Bangalore, some 150 kilometers away, we get close to Mysore. And this is the Sri Rangapatna Taluk in district Mandya, where one of the largest known irrigation channels in India, the 45 kilometer long Vishveshwaraya Canal of the Krishna Raja Sagar Dam, along with other canals originating from this dam, irrigates over 1,25,000 acres of land in Mandya, Malavalli, Nagamangala, Kunigal and Chennapatna Taluks apart from Ramanagaram and Kanakapura in Karnataka. Also generating power and supplying drinking water to the cities of Mysore and Bangalore, the Krishna Rajasaga Dam, popularly known as KRS, is a marvel of technology and state planning and one of the greatest achievements of Sir M. Vishveshwaraya. In his early career as a water resources engineer, Sir M. V. planned and designed water supply schemes for Kolhapur, Balagam, Dharwad, Bijapur, Ahmedabad and Pune. When the Public Works Department of Bombay Presidency was faced with a challenge in early 1900 to increase the storage capacity of the Kadakwasla Reservoir near Pune, Without raising the height of the dam, Sir M. V. was the man who they pinned their hopes on. Similarly, in 1908, when Hyderabad was devastated by floods, Sir M. V. came to the rescue of the government of the Nizam of Hyderabad. Osman Sagar and Himayat Sagar dams were built on Sir M. V.'s advice. And sometime later, when the fourth Maharaja of Mysore was at a loss about keeping a promise he had made to the administration of the Kolar gold fields, he could not look any further than Moksha Gundam Vishveshwaraya. Ensuring a steady supply of water to the generating station over 100 kilometers away at a place called Shivana Samudram, which fed the Kolar gold fields, was therefore a big reason behind setting up the Krishnaraja Saga Dam. Sir M. V. was the man people looked to when in distress. Challenges thrown at Sir M. V. were countless and continuous. Some administrative and a lot technical. And his most celebrated work, the Krishnanaja Saga Dam, had both in ample measure. The estimated cost of Rs. 253 lakh in the first decade of 1900 was an amount that the Mysore state had never spent on any single project. The scheme was opposed tooth and nail. They were of the opinion that the role of a bureaucrat was that of an administrator and not one of proposing innovative and creative development schemes. And here was Sir M. V. who was convinced about the social purpose of this large engineering project and soon upon approval of the Maharaja, the village Kandambadi started seeing a lot of surveying and construction activities by the beginning of 1911. And just three years after the Kiara started getting built, World War I broke out. It did bother him, but his bigger worry was about impounding the waters of the river Kaveri by recourse to modern aspects of hydraulic engineering, especially when the principles of building large masonry dams were not too well understood those times. The biggest challenge though for Sir M. V. was to build the dam without the use of cement, since cement manufacturing was still in its nascent stage in the country and it had to be imported at a high cost. So how did they do it? How did they build such huge civil structure without using cement? Oh, 
Looking east, they found that some 20 years earlier, 1889 to be precise, some enterprising Indian engineers had developed a special kind of mortar which was as good as cement and they used it in the construction of this one Vila Saga dam across river Vedavati at a place called Marikanve in the Chitradur district of today's Karnataka. They called it Surkhi mortar. The technique was further perfected on the KRS dam.